Hello, I'm Wayne DeVay, AIFD, The Flower Man, and I want to share a little bit of ideas for Valentine's. Now, Valentine's is coming up. It is February 14th. If you don't know the date, most of you, especially you guys out there, you should know the date. It's on Wednesday this year, so ample time to order. First of the week, get something delivered Tuesday or Wednesday, and look good in your woman's eyes. Women, on the other hand, same thing goes for you. Guys like to have a gift, so think of something innovative for uh, for the man in your life. We could do certainly the very traditional red roses, and this is probably the symbol of Valentine's Day in most people's minds. A dozen red roses, baby's breath, big and beautiful and bold. Certainly this is something that we do a lot of. But I wanted to work with a couple of things that maybe are a little less obvious Valentine's. And because I've just come out of Christmas and a lot of red, I'm hungry for colors other than red. So I'm going to do maybe non-traditional tonight. I want to start, I've got a, a nice uh, six inch cylinder here. And I want to be able to make a little bit of a um, an armature, a frog, if you will, in here. And I'm going to start with some of this beautiful Oregonia foliage. Maybe two, I might need three breaks, we'll find out. And clean some of it off so it doesn't get under the uh, water line. I'm going to put and clang it on the glass, that is important. Fresh cut there. This piece is long enough, I think I can get maybe two nice pieces out of it. Do that and put this in kind of a whirl effect, if you will. I want to kind of lace it in through each other here. So I've got a basic armature, pretty loose, nothing real tight. I want to come in and I want to take some of these beautiful mop head hydrangea, the white mop head, if you will, and kind of shake them open a little bit, fluff them out. This one's got a couple of ground petals, so I want to pluck those. I don't want that in my design. Anytime I use hydrangea, I like to actually dip it in a little bit of alum, which is, uh, for those of you who are cooking, into cooking or canning, uh, you know, it's uh, something you use in pickles. And I'm not 100% sure why it works. I just know that it works. Uh, it does seem to really enhance the life of uh, hydrangea. Hydrangea, I think, work better in straight water rather than using them in the floral foam, but it also works to enhance them in the floral foam. So we're just gonna come in and kind of, again, add a little bit. Maybe I wanna cut that a little bit shorter. Kind of lace these in between each other. And I think one more will pretty well fill that for me. And on this first one, I'm not going to totally abandon Valentine colors, but I, I do want to move you away a little bit. You know, men, uh, statistically, men buy red, and it is associated heavily in our minds with, uh, with love, with romantic love. But uh, women traditionally when asked, will prefer colors other than red. So uh, keep that in mind. You don't always have to do red to show that you love something. I'm gonna come in and put, got these gorgeous pink roses. And I wanna do some pink in here instead of uh, the traditional red. And these are just picture perfect. I can't do much to improve them, which is great. I don't need to do much to improve them. Give them a little bit of a cut. I'm going to put uh, maybe about three of them in here. Something, I don't know that it's got any fragrance. I don't catch any big fragrance. It may be that my nose has, uh, has quit for the day. If you can get a close up on that, that is just, in my estimation, a perfect rose. That is a beautiful rose. So I want to 
play with that pink a little bit more. And maybe soften it a little. This is uh, Alstroemeria. Uh, started out uh, originally, it was called Peruvian Lily. And it's been developed into a really huge uh, range of colors. The originals were all kind of a golden yellowy orange. And so we've got a great range of color in it now. And it's a very lasting blossom, something that will work very nicely for you. It does get the little pollen in the center, and I try to pick those for us. I have it. I have to pick their noses, if you will. Clean up, and I the little foliage at the base of the uh, the blossoms I don't think holds up really well. So I always try to pluck that. And if you have like there's a broken blossom. Obviously, you want to move that, take that away from it. You don't need that up and in front of it. And I just broke another one in that process. The design process is not always perfection. Sometimes you just got to go with it as it is. So I think we've got a good start here. A couple of things that we could do. I brought a length of ribbon and I bought brought it because it had this this pink in that kind of picked up the rose. So I want to come around the vase and I want to do a very simple knot and loops. Do a couple of loops on each side. A lot of debate about uh, the use of ribbon these days. I still like ribbon. I think it has a place. Uh, it doesn't have to be on everything but I think ribbon is a, a nice accessory in many cases. I'm going to give it a nice trim, a dovetail on that end. So we've got this kind of there. I've got a longer tail and I want to take this longer tail and I want to work it up through, through the blossoms a little bit to pull that ribbon up and through. And again, I should have dovetailed that before I got started with that. There. So I'm going to pull that up and through. And this could be a nice alternative uh, valentine for you. If you feel like it's just a little too not valentine -y, we can go ahead and make it into uh, a little more valentine to put a heart or two in it. This is a, uh, a tubing that has been on the market now for several years and kind of a fun product to work with. And so I want to take a little bit of it. Let's see if I can get this all on here. Flip this off. We can wrap it. And what I've got so far is just a big oval or round, but I want to come and make that into a heart shape. And I shouldn't have thrown all my sticks on the floor, because that's really what I need is another stick or two to go ahead and uh, pack this in. I'm going to go ahead and I've just picked up a, a rose stem and I'm going to take a wire and bind that onto the top of that rose stem. And I like doing this with natural stems because then you don't have, sometimes if you use a green wooden pick, it will discolor the water. Sometimes it doesn't look, it shows in the bottom. This just looks like it's part of the arrangement when you, when you go ahead and use the natural stems. Find a spot here. We can add one heart and if that is not enough for your heart's content, pardon that bad pun, uh, we'll go ahead and make a second and try to put it up maybe a little bit taller for you. And again, similar process, just going to take the, uh, the loop that I've made, I'm going to wire it onto a natural stem and make that heart shape you know, you can play with that and make it a little, little different if you want. 
and I would go ahead and kind of put that behind so that you have, I would call this, maybe this arrangement is two hearts. Two hearts together, two hearts beating, I, I don't know. But that's one quick and easy way to do something that is a little non-traditional. I did bring one of these great, this is a red mirrored cube. So I've got the red cubes up front with votives in it, and certainly we could use those. This one has a mirror finish, and I like that. I like that a lot. So we're starting with a more traditional container, and then I want to do something, um, I hope, a little different in it. I'm going, and I've got my foam in it, so I'm using this as a, uh, a podocarpus pine is what this is and kind of a nice light, lighter foliage. Um, it's not pine in the sense that you have that fragrance like you do with the, the traditional winter greens. And make a little bit of a collar around here. It doesn't have to cover your whole foam. We've got flowers coming in on top that will cover it. And, and we can always come back in if we have a, a spot, a hole that needs something. So I think I'll just start with that. I have about three more of those beautiful roses that I started with. I'm going to pull those in. I want to do maybe, maybe I'll do three carnations, soft pink carnations. And this is the lower rounder arrangement. This is something that uh, uh, studies keep showing that it trends a lot, to, that especially uh, younger people are very fond of this round, rounder, lower look. My wife and I had a discussion about it the other day. You know, I've been more into this sort of look, the big tall but uh, times change, tastes change, and so we certainly need to change with that as well and, and do things that are maybe um, more trendy, if you will, right now. Carnations have been sitting out a little bit. They're still pretty tight, so I'm gonna fluff them before I put them in so I don't have them just sitting there um, in that tight little wad. I don't like the look of that. see that they do open up appreciably with a very little little effort. You want to have them warm when you start to do that. You don't want to have a cold flower and try to do that or it can damage the blossom on it. So I've kind of come off center. I brought a little stargazer stem of stargazer lily and stargazers are one of the oriental lilies and they are very fragrant as they open. Again, this is one of the flowers that the uh, younger generation seems to be very fond of. And so we'll come in and tuck some of these stargazer blossoms in. I've got an open one and a couple of buds. And again, I like to do, I like to cluster uh, the buds in part because if the big lily, the open lily fades, then hopefully one of the secondary buds will go ahead and open and still fill that spot in the arrangement and you won't have, won't feel like there's a hole in your arrangement. So we can take a look and start to see, you know, do I need to come in and tuck a little bit more greenery in now? We could also do um, maybe another carnation or two would work in here. Carnations definitely are the workhorse of the industry. And uh, people, they, they've had kind of a bad rap. People have said, oh, I, I don't want any carnations in the arrangement. And I think that they work very, very nicely. You just need to use them maybe a little differently than we originally did. You need to, uh, in this case, they're almost a base material. They're, they're coming in and filling in the area of the base and just giving us a nice bit of color to work with. And I underestimated, so I'm going to grab a sixth one. We'll have six carnations and three roses and one stem of lily in this arrangement. 
This is a great size for uh, sending into an office. It would fit nicely on a desk. Uh, again, if you want to go ahead and add that uh, heart-shaped ribbon, you certainly could do the heart ribbon. I might do it with a little softer of a wire. And I'm going to come up a little ways off the, uh, the bottom of it and see if I can master this. And because I've used a finer wire, I'm not quite as concerned about hitting it, uh, hiding it as much. It doesn't, this wire will not show as much. So I can just kind of catch the ribbon, the tubing, as it goes a little bit. And so I'm going to come and I'm going to pull this up a little tighter and twist my wire. Got some length here on the end, so I want to come out this tubing does tend to fray, and so if you're going to use it this way, I'd probably put a knot in it and then clip it off so that it doesn't fray out a lot on the ends. Uh, or you could like that wilder look and, and leave it as kind of a frayed, fuzzy look. Um, I just I guess I have to have it trimmed off. I'd rather have it trimmed off a little bit. And again, we can come in and make that heart shape of it. Take that stem and so then I'm going to come in here behind the open lilies and I'm going to leave this come through, leave the tubing come through in a couple of spots and put through the arrangement so that, again, we have a, uh, oops, shouldn't have done that, have a Valentine's arrangement, and it says what it needs to say, but it's not just all the traditional red. So that's another idea that I had about Valentine's and alternatives. I want to branch off into a whole different color range. This time I'm going into yellows. And I've got uh, little Gaelic sleeves that I'm going to do just kind of a low look with them. I don't want to cover the rim of the tray entirely, but I do want to give myself a little bit of a base here. This is coming into the technique called pavé. It's uh, where I'm going to take it is not really a true pavé but uh, we'll have an element of pave in there. And pave is literally paving, if you will. And I've got, so I found this beautiful yellow rose that was hanging in the cooler. So I think that certainly we can give it uh, a fresh cut, maybe dip it in a little quick dip. I'm going to come in and put it to the side. And there's a pebble I don't like, so let's get rid of that couple of these more beautiful open yellow roses and what I found over the years is that you know people we fostered that idea that a rose needs to be in this but form but it's not always the case and especially with a more <coughs> open rose you get a lot more bang for your buck, so to speak, out of it. It covers the real estate quicker. And especially when you're doing something like this with pave, putting it very close to the water source, it tends to have uh, a very nice uh, base life for the consumer. And that's always important. I am dipping it in some quick dip because that's just part of my training. I think it's important to, uh, to always Treat your flowers uh, as well as you can so that they will perform. Some of the fresh yellow tulips. We're starting to see the first of the tulips come in. And tulips, uh, although they've become more year round, definitely you can get tulips almost all year long anymore. Um, it's always in season. They are a little more dynamic. They seem like they work a little nicer. So we've got the tulips in there, 
And what I'm going to do now, I want to take this. This is a little bit of fresh pussy willow and it's pretty limber at this stage of the game. If it's not dried out, it will be uh, pretty nice. I'm going to bind the very end of it a little. And then I want to come around. And they have to have a wire, a cheater wire in here, so to speak. down. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to wire this together. Hopefully with a little bit of luck I can tighten this and then I can turn this around and make this become more heart-shaped as I go. There. Trim this out so I have some of my wire out of there so it's not really visible come in and get me a nice sharp point on both sides. Here, and see if we can make, make that heart shape in the middle. And if you notice, I've intentionally, I've used two tulips. So I might use uh, a corny name on this, like uh, here's to your two lips, or something like that that might in, make it uh, seem kind of a fun little spark of romance in there. We're going to come in and finish this with uh, Solidago and we're just going to add a little of that in the center to bring another element in. Generally it's, uh, and, and what we're doing here is monochromatic. We've done a monochromatic arrangement and I like to have different textures. Two or three textures are great in most arrangements. Uh, you can get too much texture in uh, an arrangement, but I think that if you have like three different, we've got the, the softness of the rose, the waxiness of the tulip, and kind of the fuzziness of the solidago that is, we're putting in here. And so here's another idea. This one, like I said, I might call that tulips. And speaking of tulips, that leads me into my next idea that I want to do. And I have, this is red twig dogwood, and it does grow readily in our area. I have a bush of it growing in my backyard. This is not from my bush, but uh, certainly it will grow here with uh, relative ease. And Thing, so that I don't have it come shooting out of the vase at me, I will take a little bit of bind wire and tie it. I made a loop. I want to have a little loop or two in there. And I want to come in a little bit lower perhaps and do something like that again. And then I brought some lily grass, which I really love the lily grass. Again, this is a product that uh, will grow readily here. It doesn't grow quite like this. It's not quite uh, as robust in our climate. If I get lily grass to be 15, 18 inches tall at home, I, I feel like I've accomplished uh, a lot. So uh, this is probably Florida grown would be my guess. And it gets huge. It really comes on and up. And I could have just dropped tulips in. Certainly tulips by themselves are, uh, are beautiful and I think stand alone. I wanted to do something with a little bit more texture going into it. I'm going to come in and trim those ends. I said I was going to do all tulips, but then I realized I had these gorgeous iris behind me. And I decided I could do iris in this as well. And tulips. You can see this one is still a little nodding. Tulips will do what they want. You can try to wire them. Uh, there are old techniques where you slit them right under the blossom. 
that will essentially um, keep them from going quite as wild. What you're doing is injuring the vascular system of the tulip. And while there may be times that that's uh, important, I think what I love about tulips is the fact that they they are just kind of an untamed blossom. They will do what they want, and you just need to enjoy them for what they are. Again, with, with any product that you're using, in general, you want to pull the, uh, the foliage off so that it is not going to end up underwater. There are a few foliages that will go underwater and uh, tolerate that nicely. But the majority of things you definitely want to keep your water clear and clean as you can. One of my dreams is that someday I will be able to uh, visit the Netherlands, the Holland, and, and see the, the two fields in the spring. Um, I've seen lots of pictures of them over the years, and it just it looks gorgeous. I would really love to be able to see them in person. So maybe one of these years I'll manage to get there. So here's kind of a fun thing. We've got these, I guess if we're wa if we're waxing romantic with it, we could call these love knots here in the bottom. And we've got the flowers springing up and out. And that certainly would be sufficient on its own. But I also have a little bit of this beautiful wax flower that I think I'm going to go ahead and tuck in here as well. adds a nice, again, it adds another texture to it. Uh, I love the looks of it. It's kind of a, as the name would suggest, a kind of a waxy little blossom. And in that respect, I think it blends nicely with the waxiness of the tulips. Someday when I've invented smell of vision then you can all get the, the fragrances of the products as I'm working with them. And uh, certainly it is a great part of um, being in the business is to get to enjoy the fragrances that uh, nature provides and God provided. And I can keep on going, I can keep on filling this in, but I think in the end that it really presents itself nicely. The iris will go ahead and open uh, and move on out of, out of the top. The iris will probably be the first thing to go. And so in the way that this has been designed, then you can pull those out and still enjoy the tulips of the and, and the wax product, which will keep on going for a long time. So I hope that this has inspired you to look at Valentine's as maybe something other than just red could be, we could branch out to pinks, certainly acceptable, or we may go into something totally off the grid as far as the color chart and do yellows, or maybe come back to a nice blend of purples and pinks and soft shades that I think make nice romantic looks for you. I'm the Flower Man, Wayne DeBay, AIFD, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation.